Welcome back everybody. Tonight we're going to continue on tearing down this engine. We're going to work on this side and see how much of this we can get apart. Real quick from the last video I had a few people ask what I'm doing for organization and I know I've shown these before but I just have a bunch of these metal trays made up and I go through and I'll just write you know what they came from so starting at the fuel filter tower, I believe this line dead ends, but I'm just going to pull it off anyway. And yes, I know I should be using a line wrench here, but it didn't come off that hard. It must be attached to something down there. Either way, we can just move it to the side for now. And now we'll go after these base bolts. All right, scratch that. We're not going to do the base bolts yet. I want to make sure we can get this line off of here. Okay, with that loose, we can try pulling the base bolts. I'm not sure if this line's going to actually want to come out of there. It's a fairly short line and it's a big line so it's fairly rigid. Uh, that one really won't flex. Uh, down below here, I'm not sure if you guys can see it at this angle, but there is a nut on both the top and the bottom so it's not like I can get a wrench in here to loosen this without pulling those off. I'm not sure if I want to do that just quite yet. We'll see what happens when I pull these if we have to we can continue taking other stuff apart. Okay, with all the bolts loose or taken out, I did have one stud that did back out here in the back corner. We'll have to get him out later. Um, I think it should come off. Well, that seems to be fairly tight on there. I'm going to pull these off, see if I can get the cover off, see if there's anything I'm missing. I mean, I could go read the manual. That would probably tell me too. But I'm right here. Let's pull these off. Stud came with on that one. And I was told by Squatch to take extra care in taking this off. I don't remember if he said this was a phenolic or what it is, or a fiber. Either way, it's not a metal piece. It is a more or less plastic. So it's just getting just a little hung up on the studs here. I don't want to pry too hard, but just give it a little assistance so we come off square. Who knows how long it's been on here. And it wants to come off, just keep working it. So close. Here you can see it's a plastic piece just what the weather's done to it over the years versus the inside so back over here we have a gasket I might actually grab a scraper It'd be easier to copy that one later down the road all right I just ran the scraper around here 
lifted it all up and there now I have a nice template for when we make new gaskets so then we'll come back here and I just want to lift just a little bit here I don't want to leave any tool marks in this plastic we want to make sure this seals up again I just need to help it climb off of them studs square it would have been nice if all the studs would have backed out and then you could just lift these right off they are the old cotton string type Actually, for their age, they're still fairly rigid. But I don't think I would ever use these again, not for how black they are. We'll find different ones or replacements. And this is why you never want to force anything. There's probably a reason it's not coming off. And if you look there, there's a nut down in there. And if we dig on this side here... There is a nut on this side. And like I said, probably could have went to the manual and read and found that out. Would you look at that? Helps when you take all the bolts out. Real quick, I don't think I need to show you guys, but when... I have a component like that that I had to take apart to get off. What I'll do now, just to keep everything together, I will bolt all that stuff back together. Uh, any gaskets and that put back in there. Otherwise, that stuff's bound to get lost or, you know, gaskets, they can get broken. At, you know, they're a perfect template until you break it. So it's just easier to put it back into a sub-assembly like that. And then when we get around to cleaning all of this and go, you know, before we go back together, that's when I'll break them down, do component by component, and then reassemble as necessary. Okay, bringing you guys back up here. I know we've had this cover off before. I'm going to take it back off now for good. Because, I'm bumping the camera here. Trying to work around you. I believe there is a linkage in here for the governor that goes to the injection pump that we need to disconnect and it should be right there. So just before we do disconnect this here, I do want to look under a different cover. Only reason being if I pull it here, that is, you know, probably another six inches worth of casting that I need to try and fish that through. There might be another disconnect underneath this other cover, so let's check that out. So right below the fuel tower here, there is this cover. And I'm thinking there is a connection point in here. Um, once again, if we were to go look in the book, we'd find out, but let's just pull the cover and see what we come up with here. So this is exactly what I was looking for, and there is a cotter pin on the back side there. The problem is with a straight needle nose, I'm not going to be able to get that out of there. I need like a 45 or a 90 degree bent needle nose, and my toolbox isn't here. Uh, it's kind of frustrating not having all my tools at my disposal. Um, I think what I'm going to do just for now is probably pull it back at the governor and then once we get it slid out I could either pull this connection point or just take it all as one. We'll see how it goes. 
Okay guys, I feel like I'm jumping all over here, but I decided since I took this cover off, I might as well pull this and pull the fuel pump off. Just get this stuff out of the way. So I did pull these. These are all four studs. These two studs came out and those two nuts came off. And a little bit of sludge build up in the bottom of that. There's more of that nasty fuel. Well there, that's the joys of having a sealer in the concrete. All that just wipes up. It really doesn't sink in, it doesn't leave oil stains behind. I didn't do that great of a job, just a quick wipe, just so it's not all over. Um, I threw them rags down there just to absorb this while we pull this fuel pump off. And we have more of a mess to clean up. It's alright. That's what the shop's for. So back up front here. I did pull that off of that clevis there. It's just a cotter pin. I was able to just reach in there with my fingers and bend those back, pull that out. Um, I just put it back in here so I don't lose that. So back here behind the injection pump by the hour meter, there is a valve. And that's gonna be in the way of trying to move the pump back. The hour meter is going to hit right away, so we need to get that out of here. And never mind, there wasn't much left of it because that turned off really, really easily. So, while I have you here, I don't think we ever did cover how many hours this thing has on it. I don't know if you read that as 8100 or as 18. Either way, it's kind of irrelevant. It wouldn't matter. This machine's going to get a complete tear down and overhaul anyway. So we're probably going to turn that back to zero. Actually, now that I think about it, the only way it would ever be 18 hours is if it was overhauled. And I don't believe it was. Because you don't wear pins and tracks, chain links, you don't wear all this stuff down on 18 hours. 8100 would be more like it. That's a lot more feasible to see this kind of wear. I think up next is all these perimeter bolts that hold the pump to the filter housing. But, I know the lighting's not the best here. We have a lot of trash down in there. We're going to have to get out because there is a couple bolts hidden in there. So I'll bring you back after we clean that out. Alright. We can see all the bolts down the side there. So I probably won't show taking those out on camera. You guys aren't going to be able to see a whole lot anyway. All it is is an extension and swivel sockets. I'll show these. See if this pump wants to come off. I know a few of you are probably wondering why I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, not a three eighths. Right here. There's just not that much room. And yes, you could come in with a swivel socket and probably get it just fine, but this also works. 
Okay guys, with all the bolts removed, we're gonna see if it even wants to move at all. Per squatch, these injection pumps are a lot heavier than they look. And that's on a D3400, and this is a D4400, which I believe this injection pump is bigger. Maybe they are the same size. Either way, it's gonna be the same weight or possibly even heavier. But first we gotta get it broke loose. Okay, I was able to get it broke loose. All I did was come from the back, lightly under the governor with a pry bar and just lift it up on it. And that was enough to pop that gasket. Now I'm gonna try to see if we can get it slid off. And we found some more schmoo. It looks like an oil water mixture or fuel water mixture possibly. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. Those two studs came out of the fuel tower. So we might fight this a little longer, but I do have access to this now. So let's pull that cotter pin out of there. We'll get that out of there. We'll get these studs out. We'll go from there. Okay guys, I ended up getting the studs out over here. What I ended up doing was taking a channel locks right down the side there and just grabbing a hold of the head and just slowly wiggling them out. While I had it apart, I did take the cotter pin out of that rod. So for the governor there. So that is out. So I believe we are ready to pull an injection pump. Well, Squatch wasn't lying when he said that those are not light. It definitely does have some weight to it. So I think what we're gonna move on to next is pulling the lower filter housing and the drive for the injection pump. I think I'm gonna save pulling the uh, starting pinion for when we actually do the bell housing. Before we do the bell housing, we'll have to do the clutch, which I know there's some people interested in seeing how we get that apart. But for now, let's just move up into here and maybe we'll get these side panels pulled yet tonight. All right, so there's some good news here about them studs coming out on the injection pump on the backside. There is one left in there that we will have to slide this off from, but otherwise it's just these bolts up here. And I'm not sure if I'll need to double nut this stud and get it out, or if I can just leave this one in here and worry about that later. Let's find out. I'm just gonna pull this rod out of here. There's really no reason it needs to be in here. We'll keep that with the injection pump for now. Boy, they just give you enough room to get that out of there. Just barely. Okay, so I've just been working my way around over and over and over and over. Just kind of prying around all these studs that it's getting stuck on here. Uh, it seems to be moving. It's just not very quick. We are, there are some alignment dowels in here. We're well off of those. I really don't want to get a pry bar in here and hurt any of these surfaces. That's why I'm just taking my time here. Work around every one of them studs. All right, I think I'm about to the point where I can do this by hand. Give you guys a view this way. One thing we were looking for is any cracking going on in here. These blocks are notorious. If they're gonna crack, it's almost always behind the injection pump. 
I don't feel any heaving. Everything seems fairly normal, but we really won't know for sure until we get the sleeves and that out and get a look at the inside as well. But so far, compared to the pony motor, we're looking great. So just a couple notes. Um, had a couple questions in the last video about uh, the date code on this block. So this is the original tag 4G166. It does match the rear end. And we'll go to the other side and we'll do the date code on the block. So the date code is right under here. It is hard to read. I don't know if I'll be able to get you guys in the right light to see it. But it is an M E E L. So that would be 2 3 of 36. So it is the right and proper block for this tractor. Okay guys, I'm running short on time here tonight. But that line that we took off the top of the filter earlier that I said was attached somewhere else, that comes down to this clamp here. So I'm gonna quick buzz all these bolts out. There's a clamp there too. I believe that was for the other uh, fuel return. Or maybe that was farther back. Um, either way, I'm gonna get all these bolts out on these covers. We're gonna pop these covers off and have a look in here. And then I think we're gonna call it a night. So let's get these covers off. I didn't think you needed to watch me take all these bolts out, but I left this one in here just to keep this cover on. I have not seen behind it yet, so let's have a look together here. A scraper or a screwdriver for that one. All right, guys, first major look inside. Okay guys, I think that's going to do it for tonight. I appreciate everyone who subscribed. I'd also appreciate you hit the like button. Stick around. We still have this nastiness to take apart. And that has to come apart before we can get that bell housing off of there. And then we also still have the entire front cover to pull apart yet along with pulling all the internals. Thanks for watching everyone. Okay guys, I know I gave you a sneak peek on this last time. I've kind of been working a little off camera. Let's just say we have some loose tracks.